Two new shows in a week, you people are lucky. There's a lot of SpaceX news to cover and Rocket Lab has been busy as well. Astra's been doing some power slides and the ISS has been busy. So without further ado, get ready as this is your episode of Tomorrow News for the week of August 31st, 2021. Inspiration 4 is only a few weeks out from launch and without a doubt it is the most exciting launch of the year. Four private astronauts heading to low earth orbit for three days, you just can't beat it. Some time ago it was announced that the Dragon spacecraft used was going to get this new dome shaped window attachment which the crew will be able to use to take photos out of and just to gaze at the planet below. But until now we hadn't heard of anything else to do with it. Commander and creator of the mission, Jared Isaacman, has said that the cupola attachment has been created and connected to the Dragon capsule and that the first time the public will probably see it is when the crew reach orbit and get some nice photos from it. So it'd be good to see it in the flesh beforehand but of course it'll be covered by the nose cone on Dragon when the whole Falcon 9 stack is rolled out to 39A. Inspiration4 has also managed to land themselves a Netflix show with the first two of five episodes launching on September 6th. I'll also link to the trailer below so you can have a look. The crew have also been conducting training flights, one of which so happened to pass over Starbase and very low over Starbase indeed. Here they are at the same height as the high bay. Moving over to Starship and some updates from the man himself and it turns out there is a slight error with the forward flap design which the new design will rectify holding the forward flaps 120 degrees apart. It also turns out that the current plan is to catch not only Super Heavy with Mechazilla but also the Starship vehicle itself. Of course landing legs would still need to be attached to the vehicle to allow landings in places with no pre-existing infrastructure such as, oh, I don't know, the moon and Mars but for places where the infrastructure does exist such as Starbase it will allow for a quicker turnaround time. The booster that is slated to perform the first orbital flight test of Starship B4 has been getting some more Raptor engines strapped to the underside of it as it is preparing for the upcoming launch which is currently expected within the next two months. A new GSE test tank has been installed next door to the suborbital pads which went through a cryogenic proof test four days ago and it's a good thing it didn't pop because it probably would have damaged the ships right beside it. Work on the quick disconnect arm for Starship has been getting underway with the structure being lifted up and mounted to the orbital launch tower. And another QD, the propellant quick disconnect for Super Heavy was installed on the orbital launch mount. Both of these when in use will fuel up Super Heavy and Starship with the needed liquid method and liquid oxygen. Speaking of liquid oxygen, SpaceX President Gwen Shotwell has said that because of the latest increase in COVID cases, which has led to more people being hospitalized and put on ventilators, the company are actually struggling to secure a consistent supply of the oxidizer for the RP-1 propellant, which fuels the Falcon 9. And it isn't a SpaceX specific problem. The Orlando Utilities Commission has said that its weekly load of LOX, which it uses for water purification systems, has been cut by up to 50%, leading to to them asking local residents to not use as much water as they usually would. To quote Gwen Shotwell directly, we certainly are going to make sure the hospitals are going to have the oxygen that they need, but for anybody who has liquid oxygen to spare, send me an email. And to round off the SpaceX update this week, of course I Still Love You has finally arrived at the port of Long Beach following its trip through the Gulf of Mexico and the Panama Canal and its few weeks stay at a shipyard in Mexico. During that time the hull got a fresh lick of paint but as you can clearly see, nobody decided to touch the deck. Rocket Lab has previously stated that it wanted to go public and be listed on a stock exchange and the merger with a SPAC has been completed with the company now listed as Rooklub on the Nasdaq market. To celebrate the occasion Rocket Lab posted this video on Twitter with some really upbeat music. And Peter Beck got to ring the bell that opened the Nasdaq market. 
If you don't keep up to date with the news that often, you probably haven't heard of Astra for a while. Well, lifting off at 2245 UTC on August the 28th, the LV0006 mission got off with an unexpected power slide off the launch pad for the Rocket 3.3 vehicle, due to one of the five main engines shutting straight down. In slow motion here, you can see that a big bang happens and a part of the raceway has been kicked up. The maximum altitude reached was 33 kilometers before the remaining four first stage Delphin engines shut down and then the vehicle coasted up before reaching Apogee and falling back down to Earth. A tweet from the Astra Twitter account read, We suffered technical difficulties but achieved 2.5 minutes of flight data. Every launch, whether successful or not, is an opportunity for us to learn. Our team will study the data and use this information to iterate on our next launch. Hashtag Ad Astra. This is yet another reminder that space is hard and you're never going to make it on your first try, but eventually you will get there and after a lot of work and determination. Let's bring the spirits up, however, so let's look at some previous launches. Well, one launch. The 23rd Commercial Resupply Service mission destined for the International Space Station launched at 0714 Coordinated Universal Time on August the 29th from Historic Launch Complex 39A at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Roughly two metric tons of cargo was on board, the most notable objects being Project Maglith, Malta's first ever mission to space created partly by the Ministry of Foreign and European Affairs of Malta, and the Gikai robotic arm, which is the second robot to be delivered to the ISS this year. Docking took place the next day on August 30th at 1442 UTC. As always, eight minutes after B1061 took to the skies, it landed again successfully, completing SpaceX's 90th landing of a booster and a short full of Gravitas's first, as the new drone ship is now officially in service. If you're new around here, and you don't know, tomorrow it was a crowdfunded show. Without the support of the Escape Velocity Orbital, Suborbital and Ground Support citizens, the lights wouldn't be able to be kept on at Station 204, and you wouldn't be able to hear me or see me right now. If you wish to support financially, you can. Head on over to youtube.com forward slash tmro forward slash join and support us for as little as a dollar a month. Financial support, of course, isn't required. Just sharing the show with your family and friends helps to grow the fantastic community that we have. And of course, subscribing and hitting the notification bell also helps a lot to ensure you don't miss any of our future videos or even when the live shows return. You can also join our Discord server if you wish. Link to that is down below, along with all the references to the data that has driven the stories in today's show. That's it from me. Have a wonderful rest of your day and goodbye. Let's take a look at a mission that did make it to orbit, being CRS-3.